Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and today I'm going to start a new series on the slide rule. Now, many of you may remember my introductory series on the slide rule. It's 25 videos, including four videos of problems on how to use this, a slide rule, which is an analog computer that was in common use before the advent of these handheld calculators. Now, the difference between a slide rule and a calculator is a calculator, you basically just hit the buttons and it gives you eight significant digits worth of information. Whether or not that's right, you really don't have any way of knowing. Now with a slide rule, on the other hand, you actually have to understand the mathematics behind it, and you're a lot more in tune with what you're actually doing. Now in that first series, I just basically showed everybody how to use a slide rule. It's been quite popular. But one of the requests that I've had is, what are some practical uses of a slide rule? So this series is designed to show you how to actually use what you already know now, to solve problems that you run into as a student or in your day-to-day -day life. For example, I commonly use my slide rule in my physics classes to calculate vectors and things like that. I find it's faster than trying to do them on the calculator. Plus, it's all laid out right in front of me. Now, to get started, let's have just a brief refresher on how a slide rule works. If you want further information and you want to understand all of the different scales that we're going to be using, go back and have a look at my series on introduction to the slide rule. So without further ado, let's get started. Now a slide rule is based on something called logarithms. Now we're familiar with the concept that 100 equals 10 raised to the power of 2. A logarithm rearranges this slightly. So log base 10 of 100 equals 2. Now why is this important? When you multiply two numbers, 100 times 100, we can do by long multiplication. We simply uh, put the 100 under the other and, and just multiply it out. However, when you're dealing with exponents, you can take 10 to the 2 times 10 to the 2 will equal 10 to the 2 plus 2. Let's go to the virtual picket N3 slide rule and we'll see how to do this in reality. You see near the cursor here, I have the index on the C scale directly over the 3 on the D scale. I then just have to move this out to the 2. So here we have the 2 on the C scale, and directly underneath it is a 6 on the D scale. So I took the log of 3, and then I added to it the log of 2, and I ended up with the log of 6. Now what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So if I add the logarithms, of two numbers to multiply them to a third number. If I take that third number and subtract a number from it, I divide by that number. Let me show you how that works. Okay, so here I start off with a log of 6 on the D scale and, and I place directly above it 3. So what I'm doing is I am subtracting the log of 3 from the log of 6. And as you can see down here at the index, the result is the log of 2. So 6 divided by 3, of course, equals 2. It's just that simple. Now one thing that you can do on a slide rule that you cannot do on a calculator is set up something called a table. So here, as you can see, I have the index on the C scale directly over 1.5 on the D scale. Now as I move the cursor out to 2 on the C scale, you'll notice right underneath it is 3 on the D scale, which is 2 times 1.5. But wait, there's more. Notice that I can also come out here to 3 on the C scale, and I read straight down, and I come up with 4.5. No matter what number I put on the C scale, the number on the D scale underneath it will be 1.5 times that number. So we could go back here to 1.5 on the C scale, and if we read straight down, we're at 2.25. This is a very handy feature. For example, say you want to convert miles to kilometers. Uh, rather than have to do it individually for every single equation, you could set it up once and then just simply read off the answer, whether you're using one distance or 12. They'll all be right there on the slide rule. You're just moving the cursor around. Now here's a good example of how you use the relationship between two different scales on the slide rule to your advantage. Notice 
that here at the index of the C and the D scale, if we look up on the CF and DF scale, we see pi. Now what this means is that whatever I have on the C and the D scale is multiplied by pi up on the DF and the CF scale. So for example, if I want to find the circumference of a circle of diameter 2, I just bring the cursor out to 2 and I read straight up and I've got 6.28 on the CF and the DF scale. Likewise, I can easily come out here to 2.5 and, and get 7.85 on the CF and the DF scale. Well, let's use an example. So say we want to multiply 4 by 6 and then divide it by 8 and come up with an answer. Well, 4 times 6 divided by 8 equals x is the same as 4 over 8 equals x over 6. So let's see how we set that up on the slide rule. We put the 4 on the C scale directly over the 8 on the D scale. And then all we have to do is come down here to the 6 on the D scale and read what the value of x would be directly above it, 3. So we set up a table, and then just simply by moving the cursor, we get our answer. Now just to give you a little warning of things to come, let's have a look at an interesting way to solve for square roots on a slide rule. Now obviously there's a scale that you can read it directly. But say you happen to be working on one side of the slide rule, and the A and the B scales are on the other side. So rather than flip it, flip it over, do your math, and then flip it back to your first side, maybe you can just do it all at once on the same C and D scale. Now, a square is the product of a number times itself. So to see this on the slide rule, we could bring the index out to 2, and then multiply that by 2 to get 4. 2 is the square root of 4. But there's another interesting way to do it. Let's come back here to 2 on the D scale, and then let's look at the CI scale, which is in red just above the C scale. Now the numbers that are on the CI scale, for example here we have 7, that's not 7 like the 7 on the CD scale, that's actually 1 over 7. So if we divide 2 by 1 half, that's the same thing as multiplying 2 by 2. And once again, we come out here and we see the square is 4. That sets up a very interesting relationship between the CI scale and the D scale. So let's take an example. We'll find the square root of 9. Let's go ahead and have a look on the slide rule. So what we can do to find the square root of 9 We'll come out to 9 on the D scale, and then we'll put the index of the C scale directly above it. Notice that that's also the index mark for the CI scale. Then all we have to do is come back and find a pair of numbers between the D scale and the CI scale where the numbers are the same. So for example, here we have 3 on the D scale, and we also have 3 on the CI scale. And as a result, we know that the square root of 9 is 3. But we don't have to use easy squares for this either. But let's look at some different squares, and we'll find their square roots on the slide rule, and then compare it to what we get on the calculator. So what I've done here is I've put the index of the C scale directly over the number 51 on the D scale. We know that 7 times 7 is 49, and, and 8 times 8 is 64, so our answer is probably going to be somewhere between 7 and 8. But what is it? If we come over here to 7 on the D scale, we notice that the 7 on the CI scale is uh, a little bit to the right. How far to the right? Well, let's see. 1, 2, a little bit over 2.5. So if we come out here 1, Okay, we're at 2. Come out here to 1.5. So what we're looking at here, they line up at about 7.15. Let's see how that matches the calculator. So we come over here to our TI-84 calculator. We hit 2nd. Get the square root sign. Find the square root of 51. Hit Enter. 7.141428. We said 7.15. Well within the accuracy of the slide rule, and very good for a very close approximation. Recall, 
that this too is only an approximation, it's just got more digits in it. Now that's just a short introduction because I wanted to show you a technique that we're going to use in the next video. And that's where we tackle everybody's favorite equation, the quadratic formula. Yes, I'm going to show you how to solve quadratic equations on a slide rule with one or two quick steps. So once again, this is Bob the Science Guy. Make sure you drop me a like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.